Hey guys, welcome back. It's Damien from Marketing Food Online. I hope you guys are having a great day. If you are a owner of any kind of bakery or cookie company or any of that sort, this podcast will be for you. Alrighty guys, so um, what I spoke about earlier was about if you owned a retail or do you own a retail bakery or any of that kind of business and you're producing cookies and pastries and you do not have a presence online, you are missing out on a tremendous amount of revenue that you could be potentially bringing into your business just by having a store online. Now. What I mean by that is that uh, years ago, when I first started my business, I actually opened an Italian bakery with my wife. We did gelato. We did uh, panini sandwiches. We made handmade fresh breads, cookies, pastries, all of that good stuff. Um, And we did that uh, for a few years before going online and then realized that while we were actually in our commercially licensed facility, like a bakery, we had the opportunity to be online. And it actually honestly never dawned on me to do that until the time when we eventually transitioned to 100% uh, to the internet. So if you're listening to this and you actually operate uh, a bakery and you've got a great business going, you're local, you're, you're there in a town or a city, and your business is doing great, that's fantastic. But at the end of the day, you could be doing tremendously more business. And, I, and I'm not making this up where I'm not trying to sell you some fluff. It is a fact that uh, by being online, specifically being on Amazon, and then having some type of a website of your own, of course, um, can increase your overall sales revenue uh, dramatically. Um, so I'm going to go over really quick a few tips and few pointers as to why I have experienced this and why I share this information with you to give you an opportunity to think about the possibilities of what could potentially be much more sales uh, by simply shipping your cookies. Um, and even there's certain pastries that you can even ship, and you can do that securely. You can ship them securely without them being damaged. Um, but if you're not online uh, with any type of presence, only because you don't uh, don't know for sure or you're not familiar with how to ship these types of products through the mail, well, I've got a ton of resources that can help you do that. It will definitely create additional revenue for your business. So we'll get started. The first thing off, I would say, if you have any type of cookie, cookies are always a popular thing, especially if you have a niche uh, for, like, let's say, Italian cookies or you have German cookies or some type of a cookie that is, is something that you produce and you do it very well. You have your own unique twist on it. Uh, pretty much any and all cookies can be shipped. Uh, the next question is, how do you do it securely and safely? Well, on my YouTube channel, Marketing Food Online, my YouTube channel, you, uh, you can definitely see the videos that I put up about how to ship securely, shipping cookies um, anywhere in the country or even in the world. We've actually shipped uh, some of our chocolate pretzel rods to Singapore. Um, and I kid you not, they arrived completely intact and not broken because I understood how to pack them. And it, once you just understand the shipping process, there's no reason why you can't ship pastries and cookies, even breads, to believe it or not. If you are a, a retail outlet that makes breads, let's say you just do nothing but bagels and breads, uh, don't think for one minute that you, you, can, you can't put your product online and people will buy freshly made breads and bagels and those types of products and love to have them shipped to their front door. Uh, these types of things are super ultra niche markets um, and they're definitely in call. There's a lot of in demand. There's a lot of people who would pay to have those delivered to their door so and it even to be honest with you really quick side note you could even create a subscription box of freshly made bagels um, uh, obviously freshly made cookies too or even breads certain types of specialty loaves and things and have them delivered every month and literally create a uh, monthly service that you have revenue coming in the door from all over the place so the reason why I wanted to talk about this topic is that I've had a few people who've actually uh, that I consult now that actually have brick and mortar operations but don't have a presence online. And unfortunately that's that's just uh, it's it's just not a good thing to not be online because if you've got a great product and you're very successful locally <coughs> and you have maybe just one location, you don't have to have multiple locations. Well, it's all it all it would really take for you to do this 
is to create a, an account with Amazon, um, uh, register yourself to sell within their gourmet grocery, uh, get ungated, which is the process to allow you to sell food. Um, and that process is not that difficult. It's not, not that uh, challenging. Once you're up and running there, um, and you need to just reserve a space within your facility, uh, literally, with you could just do it with a, a laptop computer, um, and then have someone specifically in charge of the online orders, and literally ship a product that you can make to order, and you no, you have next to nothing as far as waste or product I- I- ingredients that you throw away. Um, I would say 99% of the products that we make are actually made to order, um, and that keeps our our uh, waste down considerably. Uh, ingredients that we have to get rid of because I know in the brick and mortar bakery business, if you have a case full of cookies and pastries and you don't sell them, obviously you got only a couple of days. And if you don't get rid of them, you're wasting uh, payroll, you're wasting ingredients and everything else that goes along with it. This method, this business model, you actually make the product as it's ordered. So if you can envision for a moment the kind of business model a restaurant is set up as, a customer comes to the front door and sits down at a table. They place an order for food that they are going to obviously consume during dinner. And you make that, you get paid, and then your next customer comes in. It is the same concept. Being online and having the capacity to just create what is ordered as it is ordered eliminates the waste, uh, the use of labor, uh, payroll, and everything else that goes along with that. This concept has brought us a tremendous amount of business, and it works, period. And I know how it works to a T. Uh, we have actually perfected this method in our business, and we literally make what is ordered and then move on to the next order. You know, if you create a whole bunch of cookies, you have a ton of gelato, you have fresh bread sitting in your in your bakery, and no one buys them in two days or maybe even three days at the most. I mean, you're you're looking at get disposing of all of that, and it's a huge waste. Now, if I pitched this to you and I told you, look, I could show you exactly how to set up a business where you create the product, you securely pack it, you ship it to the customer, and it arrives intact, they're happy, and they're going to come back for more, and then you're not throwing out ingredients. Would you not want to do that? That just doesn't make any sense that you would not want to increase your revenue. And if you don't have the experience or expertise or knowledge or know-how to create an online business and to do this, that is what I'm here for. So... Um, I, I, I want to get more in depth into this and I'm going to do it in a couple of sets of podcasts. I don't want to make a full hour podcast long here, but I want to just put this idea out there. So get you thinking if you're, if you're in a business and you've got that retail location, you've already got a commercial kitchen. So you're ahead of the game, to be honest with you. There is no reason in the world that you should not be online and that you could be online. And then you're, you're, you're opening your doors to not just the foot traffic coming through your front door. But you're opening the door to millions of customers 24 hours a day, by the way. You know, so when you close the brick and mortar, and I know how this is because I ran a business. I did this. If you close your doors and you open from 9 to 5, well, from 5 o'clock that evening to the following day, what, how much business are you generating in that brick and mortar? Uh, the answer is zero. Nothing. Okay? But here's the thing is you're actually operating 24 hours a day. You have refrigerators that are being run, electricity being run up, lights that are on, security systems, all that stuff, okay? But if you have a presence online, when you close that door at 5 o'clock, your business is still running. And it's not just running, but it's open to millions of customers, not thousands, millions. If you're on eBay, you can put your store on eBay, Amazon. Even if you're making this stuff, by the way, you actually are eligible to go on Etsy, there's millions of customers going to Etsy every day buying food products. Why would you not want a slice of that, pro- that, of that pie? No pun intended. So it doesn't make any sense. So check out my channel. Check out my YouTube channel, guys, if you are new to this, if you're listening to this for the first time, and this is a concept that interests you, just check it out. I've got over 300 videos. If you want to contact me directly, I offer consulting as well, and um, we can get your business online. So the YouTube channel is Marketing Food Online. Take a look at it and, and just be open to the idea that if you are running these types of businesses, you have to be, you need to be online. Um, it's it, Like I said, it's had a huge impact on our business. So with that being said, I do appreciate you guys taking the time to listen. Um, tune into a uh, YouTube channel, my Marketing Food Online channel, and my podcast. Um, I will be back up and running with 
more podcasts. Um, and I do apologize. I've had a little bit of a gap. I've been extremely busy. We're working on some new projects and we are back up and running. So I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Take care.